Okay, welcome back to my shop. Today we have a professional FM stereo transmitter made by Ramsey. This is a model FM100B and it's uh, actually quite a nice little device. Um, it is not cheap. They were like 350 bucks a long time ago and still are on eBay. Uh, this one, the problem is it has very, very low output. I actually built this for a friend of mine years ago, uh, and he's been using it ever since. He loves setting up his own little make-believe radio station. Well, the way these things work, basically, is you have its frequency agile. You can select what frequency you want to be on. You hold these two buttons down here, and it goes beep 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 and the lights flash and you can go up and down in frequency and set it where you want to I'm gonna leave it there because it's not used that, that frequency and you pull the two buttons down again and you're locked on and right here you see the little light that little light means that it is indeed locked on frequency these also have a mic input which ducks the audio when you're talking over it for whatever's coming into it which we'll see in a second um, the mics over here this particular one when I built it the mic connector was busted but the guy when it came out of the package but the guy doesn't use that so he doesn't care uh, it has two audio uh, level meters and line inputs here for the two line inputs this is your mic level if you were going to use this. It also has an AGC uh, automatic gain control for um, for your audio. In the back we got um, your these are your inputs here for your line 1 and line 2 and these are your line outputs to go to something else if you need them and this is the connection for your external antenna and there's a screw on antenna which is right here which goes down through the hole and screws onto the board and you use that for well you, mostly you would use that anyway if you're just going to use this in your house which is what he does anyway um, this guy here will open it up and take a look at the inside and in here we've got a power supply just a little switch mode power supply which I have replaced several years ago um, that with a little mean well the ones the one that came with it was I almost identical to this you know several years older uh, these little mean wells are pretty good the um, they got good input filtering uh, big old giant caps you know for the uh, for the input they're not isolated as well as I would like to see uh, as far as the input AC to the output but they work pretty well and they're darn cheap <laughs> they're they're not they don't cost much at all and you know order it 20 bucks or whatever uh, this one has two outputs plus and minus 15 volts uh, things are all glued down so it's they're not bad and they definitely easy to um, to get a hold of and to fix or to replace so it's re fixing them I don't even bother um, this one this transmitter here has all of the prerequisites that you need it's a PLL circuit with a mix you know mixing for frequency to go up it's all frequency agile as we saw and you can it all almost all of it comes as a kit with all of these feeder you know through hole components except uh, a couple of the parts are already put on for you I believe this one and this one and maybe one or two more uh, but everything else yeah all of the all the little the little uh, service mounts are already on there for you but you get to put all the rest of them in um, <clears throat> Like I said, the problem with this one is it is not transmitting very well. So we got to figure out what's going on with it. And the first thing we'll do is we'll unhook the back here 
and this is the connector and we'll hook it up to a scope and see well that won't work <laughs> hmm little barrel T connector it'll be fine um, we'll hook it up to a scope and see what we've got as far as output goes okay so here we go here's the schematic uh, for the transmitter section and basically we have a gal 5 which is a little IC uh, this transistor and its associated stuff for power output however this is an American version of this thing so you're not going to have this all these little at, amp, uh, at signs here mean it's not placed in the non-American version in some countries you can get away with more power here it's a hundred milliwatts period or less uh, so what they do is they take the output which is right here and they just sort of connect it to right there and it goes through the output filters to the antenna so we don't have that and if you look that portion that we don't have is right here uh, all of these little components this is our gal 5 this is the um, <clears throat> this is that coupling transformer or tra capacitor and these are your output coils all three of them right here and they would be these right here and this big coil here this L8 that is your antenna impedance matching and that's to the output or the this is the where the antenna screws onto so we're just missing all of this stuff so basically what we've got is coming out of here to which is back a little farther back here uh, so what we need to do is we need to find out what's coming in at C89 right here which is C89 is right there okay let's find out turn it back on this makes a nice little ground right here we are locked on frequency on 90 kilo 90 megacycles so our input is right let's see so our input is right here and our output of that little capacitor Wow okay it's right there so the output of our capacitor we're on 20 millivolts so it's 20 40 60 80 millivolts at that capacitor going into the gal 5 so the input of the gal 5 is 20 40 60 yeah almost 80 uh, and the output of the gal 5 is virtually nothing whoops sorry about that Turn it up. Yeah, I mean it's like zero. <laughs> so we got a, a fair amount of goes in and not so much at all it goes out. So I think let's go over here. And see what we've got as far as voltages are concerned. Run voltage DC. So we'll take this is our input to that GAL 5, which is 1.12 volts. Huh? This is ground, of course, which is zero. And this is the output, which is 1.76 volts. Hmm. Well, if we look at the schematic here, what we've got is we've got the 12 volts comes in. It goes through this 120 ohm resistor, comes down to here, which is also the output of the GAL 5. So it's a, it's a three-legged device, which means it needs, you know, it only needs three legs and your B plus goes in the same place as your output goes however there's a coil I'm sure up here to 
connect to it so the, the RF is suppressed out of the out of the B plus uh, and out this uh, capacitor we got no voltage here let's look on the other side of this R120 or R58 which is this guy and we have if I could stay on it there we go we got 12.03 volts there and 1.7 on that side so let's turn this off go to ohms check this resistor it's supposed to be 120 ohms and it's about a hundred okay in circuit uh, that's all right so basically I'll bet you if I go from the ground to here we have 23 ohms 23 ohms from the output of the gal 5 to ground with our schematic it's not possible we've got a little 0.001 microfarad capacitor here 120 ohm resistor there and no path to ground other than through the gal 5 which I'm sure is blown now we got to do is find one of those and if we uh, okay we'll see um, and I'll I'll get back to you later on that all right we're back and we've got our little part interesting it came with this little cobalt dichloride free sticker that says level two parts bake parts if 60% is not blue well 60% is blue it says bake parts if 10% is not blue well it's kind of blue and 5% is pink well that's kind of pink uh, it's not showing up in the camera exactly right but there's some blue there and uh, I've had this it was blue or I had this thing out of the package for a little while here's my little part here's my little gal 5 actually it's not a gal 5 I couldn't find one this thing is a it is a MGA 31189 whatever came you can see it came from Mauser it's supposed to be identical it's a good thing they make them because there aren't any gal fives available anywhere and we got to pull that little guy out right there so let's get to it we're going to heat up the old thing here give it a little air I'm at about 355 that should be enough because this thing is put together with real solder years ago and uh, it, it, none of this zero lead stuff might have to go up a little bit yeah there we go all right so that guy is off and open up my little package these things all this stuff always comes on these little strip modules that are meant to go into machines pick and place machines All right. there we go put her 
down. Ha, it's a good fit too. Ha, I'm glad. Well, I was pretty sure it would be because I actually measured the other one and uh, it said that it was correct. So, tack this thing down a little bit. Whoops. Got to get these. actually too big to do one way and too small to do another there we go we got it All right. little solder there little solder there little solder there and just to make sure it's pretty clean that up alright part in. Let's do some quick tests. Let's see. Uh, no short. There's ground. There's input. Hey, no shorts. So now let us hook up our scope again. And see what we got. See if this replacement part, <laughs> which isn't what was in it, will work. Everybody cross their fingers. Let's turn this thing way down. Turn, the, turn it on. And cross our fingers and see what happens. Yee ha. Okay. <laughs> if you remember before, we had about 25 millivolts coming out of this thing at uh, on frequency. We found out we've got 5 volts output. We now have the antenna sort of connected to it and we're going to give it a little bit of audio. And see what we got to, what we got coming out of it. Turn my volt volume down. I've got 0.6 volts going in at one kilohertz. So give it some audio and turn it up. Don't short out the input. All right. So there's our input. 0.6 volts. There's 200 hertz. And there's zero. And it's working. So everything's working just like it's supposed to. Yay! We did it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe or at least give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And we'll talk to you later.